Hello and Merry Christmas, Jason from TechAU and my Tesla has just finished its Christmas update so let's go and check out what's new. Alright, so we're in the car now and the first thing I notice about the screen, it does give you a prompt that, you know, you're on the new version, Software 11, so let's check it out, see what's, uh, what's new in here. Alright, so here's the prompt, it says Software version 11, so from way back when I got the car, in September 2019 we had version 9 and one of the biggest upgrades was version 10 and so for the last couple of years we've lived on version 10 so for 11 to arrive we know it's sort of a big set of features that that is going to be a full build full release uh, so let's check it out so we'll tap to explore what's new and of course it's going to give us a bit of a tutorial on what's uh, what's new so it says a few items have moved under control so your vehicle controls are now here and you can see you can access Charging, windscreen wipers, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and the Sentry mode, which was all previously in the top right-hand corner. Now we're moving to a customizable bottom bar. So like in the refresh Model S and X, we now have the capacity to rearrange the apps that are on the um, bottom touch bar there. So we can do that. And temperature controls, we see it's split between here and here. And we've got obviously seat warmers and configurations between whether it's split or merged all that sort of fun stuff and of course the temperature adjustment itself. Home links down here that's uh, certainly new same sort of side pane here for the vehicle and the ability to open uh, the frunk and the trunk. Um, just immediately the off the bat like the initial impressions is certainly the the duplicate um, temperature controls that's something you want to sort of merge in if you're the only one who who drives in the car regularly and and most commonly it's you know it's just myself driving in the car but um you know when you do have other people in you let them customize their own temperature by all means but yeah the, the different colors in the applications down the bottom certainly a, a different look and feel to the thing so swipe up for more controls fine or obviously we're tapping and still that same ability just to touch and drag on the temperature which is great so auto, so split. So really we don't get the ability to merge those temp temperature controls in together, which would be nice. Split button seems to do exactly nothing. Cool. All right, well that's very different, but so this whole section, it's, it seems to come up a lot higher than it did before. We've obviously got a manual fan speed up here, whether you recirculate the air, the AC's on or it's just the fan. Front and rear demisters, turn the whole thing off. Uh, and then of course over here you can choose whether you want the, you know, the air to flow from the, the top and, and down at your feet, which I immediately feel the airflow down there. Uh, we've got rear he seat heaters in this model. So I can turn them all off there, back to the front. Camp mode, dog mode, keep climate mode enabled. So if you want to jump out and keep the car uh, still, you know, staying cool and that sort of thing, you can do that. Set it on a schedule. I mean, all your options are there. It's just sort of rearranged and laid out differently. Sort of no difference in terms of the airflow. Just, you know, you get to arrange it like you normally do. Alright, so yeah, so stepping out of here and into the vehicle controls. So, wow, so very different. I mean, we've still got the sort of left menu here. That's that's as you'd expect, as we've had previously, but much more sort of touch-friendly uh, options in here. So let's do something as simple as like adjust the mirrors. And that is even different too, that it stretches sort of the full length of the display there rather than it sort of being, a, you know, a dialog box. So switching between left and right, adjusting those mirrors using the, you know, the buttons on the wheel and the mirror changes. So recording, it's just an on-demand thing, but the sentry mode's enabled or not. Obviously I'm in the garage at the moment, so that's not on. You do still have access to those common sort of uh, icons or utilities that used to be in the top left up here. Um, child lock, that's, I guess, yeah, that's pretty cool that you have the ability to get to that quickly. Glove box, still pretty, you know, just a tap, tap, and you're there. Uh, display brightness. So let's just go through these. So 
obviously I'm in sport, sport, um, and standard for that, hold for stopping, and that looks a little different. I don't have red calipers by the way, I have the performance minus, but uh, we'll let that slide. Supercharging tips, oh yeah, that's the normal like you need to put in your destination before you go supercharge so it uh, automatically conditions the battery for optimal charging rate. So I don't think in here there's going to be too much, so still Mad Max, that looks good. Let's customize Summon, still the same and 20 is the minimum. Still got all your offsets if you want it. Locks are still the same. This is displayed a little differently, but doing the same things for us. Now, auto high beam, that is one that I'll have to go and test at night, but um, has not been a great feature of Tesla. They're, they've not done a great job when you've got oncoming traffic. So I'm hoping that there's some uh, improvements in version 11 there. Of course, you've got the, the dark mode, light mode, or what I prefer to have it as auto. And then as it detects the different light in the environment, it will change automatically. This trip screen, dramatically different than what we've seen before. It used to be sort of in a little swipe card over on the right here, but now we've got a sort of full display, which is a thousand times better. That's a really a good addition. Uh, navigation, nothing different there from what I've noticed. All similar controls here. Very different service menu, so top-down view of the car, and then you get access to things like car wash mode. Oh, we don't need to do that now. Towing, adjust headlights, wheel configuration. You can see all the sort of standard options there, but laid out with buttons rather than uh, you know, different different links. So let's go to software. And 31,000 Ks on my car so far. We're now running version 11, 2021.44.25.2 and the full self-driving beta variant of that in the US is a dot six. Um, on advanced even that has, has updated its display a little bit or the way it's laid out. So that's kind of the controls menu. But I'm keen to... Okay, so I do have home link and I don't know if you can see that, but when I'm triggering it, the garage door is going up or down. So there we go. And I also have the garage door controller mounted underneath here, just in case uh, there was ever an issue, I could manually override it under this. But yeah, home link nice and big. Um, interesting. Still got the ability to get to your charging and your charge options here. So how much you want to charge, 90% is kind of where I usually live. But yeah, the percentage or kilometers, same thing there. All right, let's dive into apps. So way different. And this, this really looks like they're gearing up for, uh, you know, the potential app store in Tesla, which would be fantastic. But you're just going to take your common uh, apps that you, you would use and touch and drag, I assume. Yep. So recent apps, my apps. So my apps being where you could store ones you use all the time, whereas it's going to automatically handle recent apps. So, I mean, what do I want down there, really? Calendar would be handy, maybe. I don't really use USB too much. Toy box. Spotify I definitely use every day and that sort of leads me to think well how many can I have in here and the answer looks like it's four interesting that we've got some extra space here but we're only allowed to have four in there I'm interested to see when we've got this new feature to um, show a preview of the, the side repeater camera as you indicate, uh, you know, you're about to do a lane change. So it will show you, and this is, you know, common in some other cars. My wife has it in her CRV for the passenger side, um, but it will show a preview from, say, the left repeater if you're indicating left and the right from the right. So if you did have the camera running, I'm interested to see if it just duplicates that feed over here, because I've seen previews online where it actually has an overlay of that camera here. So Generally, most people probably don't drive with the camera running, but I do it time to time. Um, so that's interesting to see how that would play out. There is also a new change to um, waypoints. So if I pop in here and let's say, let's do 31. Actually, I think they've changed the font on the keyboard here. 
So let's just pick a random destination somewhere in, in Wodonga. And what can I add waypoints to that? I don't know. It's interesting. But this nav has changed. It used to be in the top left there. And yeah, so we've got satellite and non satellite view. Um, and then if we pan over here interesting so when we tap the charging thing it really just is now a toggle on you know are we going to show charging options on a map or not it doesn't actually give you a list of the locations of you know nearby charges but if i was to feed it a voice control and say you know navigate to supercharger let's do that navigate to supercharger all right so it gives you the options of superchargers around here it's it's pretty interesting it's not giving me the Wodonga one given that's the closest but it does give me something like the Alvin's one. Cool, all right, so let's have a look a little bit more about the apps down here. As I said, I definitely want Spotify. So I'll leave that there. Spotify, actually feels like you get more of a, okay, they've repositioned it. So these menus here, whether you're choosing from podcasts or your artists or playlists, that sort of thing, um, they used to be running down the left here and now they're at the top. So you get actually more, uh, you know, more of the actual, music or options or playlists and things like that. So actually, yeah, my initial reaction, pretty good. I like that. Um, still looking pretty similar for all of this. So let's do, what else can we do? Radio. I don't often listen to radio, but it is interesting to sort of see the UI changes in here. Okay, pretty much as we'd expect. Bluetooth menu browser so this is one that's not typically being you know fast at loading um, this could be a first time thing it might be a little slower than normal but we'll see how we go cool and then we might just fire up a random website could use the dot-com button Alright, alright, alright. Okay. Yeah, that's not the fastest thing in the world. I wish they would sort of improve that. They are running sort of, you know, dealing with the Intel Atom processor inside the, the computer here. Um, so they're sort of hardware limited by that, but we are seeing new models, um, you know, looking at a new chip. So if there was a retrofit for a reasonable amount of, you know, reasonable price, I might, might consider that. Here is some of the new, uh, another new item of this update, and that is this, the, the light show, which I'll take a video tonight, obviously when it's dark, but the idea here is you've got a light show, and you hit start the show, you jump out, it winds the windows down, play some music, and, um, you know, and then you get the Christmas song, similar to what they did in the Model X, but obviously you don't have the fuck wing doors to go up and down, but um, there's videos online from Tesla today of them lining up the S3, X and Y models next to each other and they created a nice video so um, go check that out if you haven't already. So it's a neat little trick but the thing I was really surprised at and really uh, yeah a nice little extra Christmas present today for anybody who's kind of like developer orientated or done a little bit of development in the past um, they do have a GitHub project where they are allowing you to customize and build your own light show. So they give you obviously the initial one but it sounds like from the US, you, you load up your custom one, feed it in the USB drive, and you'll be able to play your own custom light show um, with music. So that's something I never expected. Nice little gift or a present in this update. So we see the whole toy box has been sort of reconfigured, and you know we've got light show, emissions, you know, just the app selection here from the toy box. And I imagine arcade is a similar story. It is. And obviously one of the newer ones, um, brand new in this release, is Sonic. And I immediately see here it says requires game controller. So, you know, one of the things that is a great idea is to keep a Xbox controller or something in the storage bin here. And then you just pull it out when you're supercharging and not using the car. So we've got Sudoku as well, Skyforce. That's actually pretty cool. I enjoy that. Um, play game. So Solitaire, and this used to do a full screen option as well. I'm sure that's probably still there. Mm, maybe, maybe not. Actually, here we go. There we go, full screen. 
Cool. All right. And we'll just swipe that down. All right. So, karaoke, toy box, browser, theater, theater. Okay. So, we don't get uh, anything new here. It's just Netflix, YouTube, Twitch, and tutorials. They had recently in, you know, recent updates also added um, some additional Tesla theater options in here which is great for sort of new customers that are sort of unfamiliar with the car. You might not want to dive into the software manual. You just go watch a video about how the car works. There's a lot more. So I think that's a, that's a good inclusion. So what else can I see about the car? In vehicle controls, temperature stuff, messages, calendar. All right, so Christmas. So the calendar's actually, I really like that. There's a, there's a lot new about the, the calendar there. So I probably won't go into calls and stuff because I might reveal numbers and that sort of thing that people won't appreciate. But I think for the most part, I mean, I'm not a total user, so I really won't bother about that. Don't do karaoke. Energy. Okay. So people were, some people were nervous they were getting rid of this. Thankfully, it's still there. I do like to dive into this occasionally, especially after you've had a bit of fun in the car and see how much energy you just blew through. But generally... I really like the configurability of this because people have very different um, favorite you know, apps that they use. I would probably put, I think I'm going to settle on camera, Spotify, messages certainly isn't a common one. Maybe something like that. Maybe calendar instead of something like that. I don't know. I'll use it for a bit and see, but yeah, so clearly on top of the software, what we get every release in the car is some adjustments to the way autopilot functions. So the learning that they're doing through um, you know, computer vision and then the AI processing on the back end, um, they're basically um, making the car smarter, learn more about the environments, how to read lane lines and road signs and all that sort of fun stuff. And we see the, the front end of that in the beta in the US, but uh, unfortunately not in Australia yet. So. For now, we just sort of see subtle improvements and, and that can be something like where two lanes merge together and the car's behavior just sort of resolve those two lanes coming together. Um, I've noticed over a series of updates that, that gets better and smoother and more human-like. And uh, and they're the kinds of things that you'll never see in release notes, but they, they are changes that come to the car. So yeah, first impressions, certainly of just looking through the software, um, really solid update. Obviously not probably as major as, you know, when we got this three quarter view of the car, that was quite substantial change to, you know, how things were visualized. Um, but in general, I think, um, you know, it's it's what Tesla does. It's sort of really well-developed, well-refined software. The, the colors are interesting. I maybe would like a theme option where it's just a monochrome to get rid of the colors. All right, let's go for a drive and try out the new version 11 software. But before we do, there is something we need to enable, which is in, the autopilot menu, if we scroll down, we can get to uh, here, automatic blind spot camera. So this does need to be enabled. So if you've got version 11, you go for a drive and it's not working, that's why you need to enable that first. All right, so let's throw it in reverse. And something else we need to pay attention to, I guess that's changed considerably is the fact that, um, well, okay, there's a few things. So all of this has, has been rearranged and resized considerably your you know drive selection your speed your current speed zone and actually immediately what i notice is that we've got a speed zone even though i'm parked in a garage so how on earth would it know what the speed zone of the location is it would have to remember that from signs it's seen previously or from location data coming through the nav so i believe that's coming from the last known uh, speed zone sign but i could be wrong so let's try it out And my model is the 2019 Model 3 Performance Minus. And I did have a retrofit of the Homelink. So basically, you know, pull out of the garage, garage door closes automatically. It's a nice little feature to have. So included in the car, but I did have to get it put in after I received delivery. So I'm noticing that, okay. <laughs> No, that make it easy parking on either side of the road. Um, so 
So there's that side repeater camera and man, that was awesome. That was really cool. Now here's my test of having the camera running and getting the repeater. So I might take a ride up here just to test this. So right. Ah, that is awesome. Oh, they're smart enough not to like double show you the camera feed. Oh, that's such a good good resolution to that. I was worried that we were going to get a double camera feed and that kind of looks like, you know, amateur hour is like a bit messy. So if you are running the camera, it says, right, you know, you're seeing it over here. If you're not running the camera, you'll get it here. God damn, that's so good. I was, uh, <laughs> let's say, a little worried about how that would play out. Now, I do see edges on here, like there's a little, um, you know, padding on either side of that. I would like to see that maybe fill out that space just to look a little bit more integrated into this panel rather than it's sort of a layer over the top. But, you know, it's such a mild complaint. Just having it in the first place is such a great addition. And, uh, you know, well, you do have side, side mirrors to look in. Uh, to be honest, I think I'll be looking at that camera feed. It's just where your eye is already, you're looking at speed and maybe some other things on the display. So just really convenient, very smooth. And the, the great thing about it is it's just instant. Like the second you put on your indicator, it's there. So uh, yeah, really love that. All right, so I'm seeing this new, not only 80 speed zone that it's detected, but also 80 max is obviously what I've got the cruise set to. So my uh, autopilot configuration is to jump to the speed zone you know so wherever i put it on i could be doing 67 at the time i put on it and a, a cruise an adaptive cruise and it jumps straight to whatever the current speed zone is so that way i can be assured that really i never am speeding so really that's one of my favorite features in the tesla a lot of cars have adaptive cruise but almost none have that kind of feature where it's jump to the current speed zone and you just enable it and it does the rest so we're picking up sort of all the normal things on the on the lane markings in terms of you know there was a, a left turn lane there and we see that going past us i'll just pay a bit more attention next time a car passes us on, on the oncoming uh traffic and and see how that's being rendered and reflected there was an extra pole there i've never seen and the poles underneath the speed signs now so yeah those cars seem to be miss that one miss that one that's interesting and that one's there so not sure why I missed those two, but certainly the poles underneath the speed signs, that is new. And I do like this new font they're using over here, although it's not consistent over here. They're using more of a bold face up here. So autopilot enabled is a little blue steering wheel at the top there. It's much more refined and small than it was before. But I guess if you've used the car for a little bit, you don't need that in your face. You can kind of quickly look as a reference point. You, you know from the blue lines clear that it's tracking the lane lines and, and you've got autopilot enabled. I do have the full self-driving package so there's some extra stuff in terms of the full self-driving preview that we have. Um, you know traffic lights and other sort of aspects that we might see uh, as we come up to a set of lights up here that you know not, every, not everybody has but let's just do one of these automatic lane changes and if it's, so it's not detecting extra lane and now it is and it's going to make sure there's available space and then transition us over. So it is still, you know, making us confirm on green, which is annoying. But uh, I did have a lead car for a little bit of that. So if there was a lead car for us. Obviously, I wouldn't get that prompt to, to continue, but I did have to feed in some acceleration to get through that intersection. So yeah, picking up the third lane quite well here. This whole section just got redone and repainted, so it's nice and nice and new, but Generally the lane markings, even if they're pretty terrible, it still is, is doing a great job of picking them up. Navigate to supercharger. Navigate to supercharger. Supercharger with longer is now an option, that's good. And it also fares plenty of other alternative charging locations. Mute navigation. like it's a busy day at the Tesla Supercharger. There's only two stalls out of the six available again. That's been a sort of familiar story in the last week or so. I've been there a couple of times and certainly there is getting more Teslas around regional Victoria, that's for sure. Yeah, I love that camera feed. That's great. 
there is a, a little bit of, you know, your vision is blocked slightly by sort of my left hand here, but depending on your height and your seat position, you know, the, the wheel, um, there's a lot of parameters that go into that as to whether that's going to be an interrupted view for you. But I mean, you're seeing like, you know, three quarters of the thing. To be honest, like in a situation like this, if I'm going to indicate and change, I, I barely like look at my blind spot anyway, because I know the car has it under control. Like in terms of the things I have confidence about, I'm very close to 100% on that, but it is never screwed up for me doing a lane change like that. It knows the size of the car, it knows the available space required for the lane merge, it knows the, you know, the distance between the cars around you, and, you know, it will, it will only change once there's available space. Like, literally you could be beside a car, throw on your indicator, and it just says, um, you know, there's, there's not enough space, it shows it red, and then it'll either apply the brakes or wait till there's an available space and then do the lane merge. Like it is really one of the most rock solid aspects of autopilot and full self driving, the preview that we've got. Um, I really love that. It just, just takes so much of the mental energy out of a, you know, a lane merge, which is often where accidents happen, you know? So it's great. So obviously we're not doing roundabouts yet. So I've got to disengage before I take a roundabout and that's what the previous sort of red alert was. Yeah, I'm loving this. You know, the whole, I, I, I gotta say, I, I love the refresh on the UI. The ability to have your own apps here is just great and natural and probably should have been there for a while, but it just makes sense that, you know, not every Tesla owner is the same, certainly. We've all got different tastes and preferences and, you know, like I don't use Tidal at all, but I use Spotify every single time I'm in the car. All right, so what we're doing now is just a quick test and navigate on autopilot. Obviously, we did some city street stuff there before. Let's do some navigate on autopilot as we head from Wodonga over to Albury. Now enter the roundabout and take the first exit. left indicate as we go onto the freeway it's like really annoying <laughs> i don't know i don't get it like obviously what we're doing is we're merging to the right lane so why it's indicating left i'm not quite sure and then that makes it actually now with the the preview window it actually makes it look even worse so i really hope they fix that and then this is actually what should happen which is um you know the the right indicator goes and it merges right and now apparently we're moving into the right lane for some strange reason. I get that we need to, you know, move over if we're going to take over this car, but that's a long way ahead. So, also interested to see how it's dealing with lane mergers. So, we've got uh, one coming up over here. So, this is upcoming lane change in three kilometres. It's a new icon there for navigate on autopilot. So it's going to change lanes and just go right up to that guy and then braked and switched over. That was not what I would do, but fine. And if, you know, even though the icon's changed, not a big deal. That's just how you enable it and disable navigate on autopilot. Um, but you'll see the single, you know, blue line here. So yeah, the. the Blue single line obviously indicating navigate on autopilot over the normal um, you know, two lines for an autopilot. We're tracking the three lanes here pretty well. The third one branches off there, back to two here, and then we go to three after this uh, section up here. But I love the you know dividing line, the dotted line in between it gives the impression it's almost reading the individual white dashes on the road. I'm sure it's not. It's just a similar representation to it, but it it, um, it does sort of give you a good confidence and it understands the division between the two lines uh, and whether you can switch lanes. Now, if that was solo, it'd be a different story. And now it's taking me into the left lane. Looks like someone's broken down on the side here. Or they've lost a bit of the load in their trailer. them pretty seamlessly. And just slowing. Now take the B50 exit on the left. From 100 down to 90 for some reason. I mean, it's being very cautious about slowing us up to this. 
this section. Back to Port Aquila. And it's going to get us in the left lane. No, I'm going to do that bit. But that was cool, got us to the off ramp. We see all the traffic lights everywhere up here. A bit jerky on the brakes, it's still got some improvement to do there, but. Um, okay, so <laughs> this is funny. Now they've got the, the lines, the stop stop sign there was actually on a pole, on the traffic light pole, but uh, represented as sort of a standalone pole. Not a big deal by any means, but interesting now that we've added the, the poles to signs that it's now going to do that everywhere. Cool, that was my GoPro mount, being weird. Bring it around, let's go. So I think that's basically it. Mute navigation. Mute navigation. Okay, cool. I think I turned it off. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So we've done sea streets, we've done a bit of navigating on autopilot on the highway. The camera preview is certainly a good addition. They do need to fix that indicator going onto the freeway in Australia. I don't know if that's a hangover from the US, um, you know, whether things are on the opposite side of the road. But um, other than that, I'm um, pretty happy with the update. If there's anything else you'd like me to test in version 11, if you're sort of watching this, considering whether you get a Tesla and you're thinking, oh, does it do X, Y, or Z, let me know in the comments and I'll do another video on it. But I think this will do us as a bit of a wrap for version 11 software update on the Tesla Model 3. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit the like button and uh, that will help the YouTube algorithm uh, surfaces to more people, which will be very handy. Thanks, guys. Bye. It's always my question, like faced with the choice of two lanes, how does it decide which one it's going to get in? I don't know the answer to the question, but... Okay, let's take over. Cannot wait for the day, it does roundabouts.